All right, we've been working with systems of equations, and when we have two variables, finding the solutions are pretty straightforward. We can graph, we can use a substitution method, we can use elimination. When the systems get bigger, we still have these different tools available, but they become a little messier, and so I really like to focus on matrices to help us solve these, especially as the systems get larger and larger and larger. So we have technology, we have graphing calculators, we have Desmos that we can use. And so finding the reduced row echelon form of these matrices is a pretty straightforward exercise. But then the key will be interpreting the result. And that's what I want to focus on in this video. I'm going to show three quick examples. Uh, there are other videos out there pretty easy to go find. You know, how do I put this in a calculator? How do I enter this into Desmos if you have questions about that? But this video will specifically focus on interpreting the result. So let's jump in and look at this. So here's one that's already done. We've got this system of equations. I entered it into a TI-84 calculator in this case. Reduced row echelon form. Here was the original matrix. And then this is the result you can see. Notice it reduced it. We've got a diagonal of ones. And let's interpret what this means. So x plus 0y plus 0z equals 1, or in other words, x equals 1. Next row, 0x plus y plus 0z equals 2, or in other words, y equals 2. Last row, you can see where we're going here. 0x plus 0y plus z equals 3, z equals 3. The way we'll write that is 1, 2, 3, an ordered triple. Again, I hope you can see where that came from. Remember how we took this original equation and wrote it in as a matrix. x plus y plus z equals 6. That's just that first equation, isn't it? 2x minus y plus z equals 3. That's the second equation. The calculator did Gaussian elimination, removed things for us, simplified it. Now we interpret the result. Let's look at another one. Okay, same thing. It's already been done for us. Let's interpret the result. And the key, I encourage, go look at that last row. What does this mean? 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 1. Or in other words, 0 equals 1. Well, how do we feel about that? That is not a true statement. So we simply say no solution. And again, these rows didn't even matter. Go look at the last row. That's where the technology is always going to put it. Uh, if there are problems, 0 equals 1, no solution. One more. Okay, and again, let's go look at that last row. Notice now we have zeros across the board. 0 equals 0. Well, this is a true statement, isn't it? This tells us that there are an infinite number of solutions. This is a dependent system. Now, early on when we're introduced to this, maybe in like an Algebra 2 course, we would just stop there and say infinite solutions. But as you enter a higher course, college algebra, pre-calculus, you're moving forward, we'll take this even further. And so there's a couple different ways we can write our responses here. Let me illustrate those. Let me just get rid of that. So, what does this mean? Well, I look up here, notice I've got an x and a z and a coefficient that goes with them, I've, or a constant, I've got a y and a z. Okay, so basically down here, I don't know anything about z, so there's different ways this is written. We could say z could be anything. Maybe I'll just use an a as a variable. z could be any number, basically, right? Now, up here, I'm going to write these other variables in terms of z. And so what does this mean? This means y minus 15 z, right, or I could put an a here, substitute, equals negative 13. So then if I solve for y, y would equal negative 13 plus 15 a. I could just add that over. Let's do the same thing up here. So x plus 23 z, but I'm just saying z could be a, any number, equals 22. Let's solve for x. So x equals 22 minus 23a. Let's put all that together, write my solution. So 22 minus 23a is my x value. 
Again, it could be anything, but it depends on what I plug in here for my A value, doesn't it? Y is negative 13 plus 15A, and finally Z, I'm saying is anything. Z could be A. Again, an alternate way we could write that. If I just left Z as Z, this would be 22 minus 23Z, negative 13 plus 15Z, and then, of course, z, I'm saying is anything, and then these other two values depend on that. Both are common ways that I've seen these solutions written. So I hope that helps. Three options, right? We've got one nice solution. We've got infinite, and then we write the dependent relationships, or we have no solution.